<laughs> they're trying to figure it out. They're making honest guesses. Melrose, Monrovia, <laughs> which is not close. And he says, or milkshake. Yeah, Could the obvious answer. And I love the pumps all about the obvious answer. Occam's razor. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, I love these. I love it. It's, it's very postmodern. We're playing with the idea of having a central plot. So now we come to the moment where Phil and I said, this will be easy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, why? There's, oh, God. I tell this story a lot. Phil's sick of it, I'm sure. But Phil and I have been writing partners for a long time. And we'd written a number of feature-length projects that have never gotten off the ground. And Phil said, I just want to write something and then make it. Something cheap, easy, fun. And our solution was night shoots, cars, and a cast of 18 in the initial episode, I think. So it's a very <laughs> ambitious project. And I think that a lot of people, a lot of people take advantage or take for granted how, how hard can it be to shoot one person in a car shouting at a person in another car. Oh my God. Right? It's not that hard. Oh, it's easy. We get a couple cars, we'll drive parallel to each other at a constant speed. Right. Yeah. And how are we going to shoot this? Well, we'll have a third car, <laughs> which is a hatchback with the door open, with the back door open, and a camera hanging out of it. Breaking numerous laws. Every law. I'm sure. And yeah, so I love I love when Mark tells a story about, oh, Phil just had this brilliant idea. We'll make it easy. Not. But it also speaks to Phil's ability as a producer, as a storyteller, to for him to say, you know, night shoot, cars, it'll be fun. And for nobody to stop and say, we can't do that. <laughs> like, we all just believed it. We all said, yeah, we can. And guess what? We're looking at yeah. it. I love the scene. It's beautiful. The cars driving parallel to each other. These lovely ladies. And we got these just these chicks. They're, they're, they're hot chicks. Being friendly, gab festing. And this is another just... This is an incredible shot for me. I don't know, maybe audiences at home don't think it's a big deal, but I think it's pretty incredible that you can see both characters, they're both acting while driving, the follow car is keeping up with them. It's, um, it's a special moment. <laughs> these are days apart, weeks apart, these, these two scenes that we, we shot. Um, Probably different counties. Yeah, we were <laughs> I think we made, it in, we made it into San Bernardino County and in some of these driving oh shots. Oh, yes, we're in, the, we're in the Inland Empire here. Uh, this shot here, and I want, you to, I want you, everyone to notice the mile-long line of cars behind our hero cars here. <laughs> we just decided to slow shit down for L.A. for a little bit here on uh, Hope Santa Monica Hopefully Boulevard. there wasn't an ambulance somewhere back there. So we have Drake... Our world has now expanded. Drake has now introduced us to Melody, his fling at work. Uh, and we now get to introduce all the other characters. Nikita here, her, her attraction to Mr. Bum, who these, she knows homeless. Yeah, these women, these female actresses, as opposed to female actors that you got here, they, they all brought a lot to their characters that just wasn't written on the page. They're incredible, especially we have uh, Callie here, who was just charming and hilarious. And yeah. then Colleen, amazing. But this, this is all very difficult because this is, you know, whenever we have to, whenever I have to shoot our shots here, I have to get... It's, it's a little bit of a... Rubik's Cube. Well, right, yeah. I, was gonna say, I have to drop up Nikita back at El Pollo Loco parking lot, which is what we were commandeering for yeah, a while. Yeah, which will be featured heavily in the very next episode. Yeah, in episode four. Uh, you know, I have to drop off Claudia, get in Claudia's seat, shoot everyone from that angle, then drop off, drop off Callie from the front seat, and we see here, shoot Colleen, and then pick up Nikita and Claudia and shoot them in the back seat. So this is, oh. This is her improvising this silly laugh. <laughs> that everybody seems to get really concerned about. Comedy is all about reactions. And I think that as funny as her laugh is, what really sells it is cutting away to her friends being kind of creeped out and weirded out by her, which is a very natural. I, I loved it. Very real moment, I think. And then this, I love this moment here. 
between Lance and and Samantha, who we just barely introduced. We don't even know her name yet, but we know that Lance is Falling immediately in love with her, despite the fact that he's got this looming problem of Deb, who might be pregnant. He is convinced at this point that she's probably pregnant. Right, but it's not going to stop him from falling in love. From feeling something real. Which is L.A. I mean, L.A. is about the immediate, and I think that that is kind of part of the show. This is another kind of example of Drake being able to see what's happening in the world around him. What what we would think, it, what was... what. Yeah, the, the audience would expect was just a quiet moment of eye contact between him and this girl. Yeah. Drake realizes, oh, I know where this story is going now. He's in love. Yeah, this is a huge moment. He it's, sees what's going on. It almost implied that it almost implies that Drake slowed down time for that <laughs> slow mo. <laughs> I think mean, it, I mean, it directly implies that yeah. you know, he sees everything that's going on. And then we have our out with uh, the long and gloved by Samantha and Lance. And that is the third episode of Milkshake.